Hi. Uh, we only have four questions to go through this time. This is uh, differentials. They're not a very common topic, but they come up sometimes. And if you don't know how to do them, they can be uh, kind of daunting. But there are always multiple ways to solve these guys. So I'm going to do. I'm going to try to do a relatively different way, uh, or as many different ways as I can kind of come up with. Because some of these, like question 10 right here, you can solve without any calculus at all. So we are given uh, this equation for the surface area of a cone with height h and a base radius of r. And we're told that h and r are measured to be 3 and 4. But the maximum error in each of those measurements is 1 inch. And we're trying to find the maximum error that could have occurred. And so it might help to draw this thing out. We've got some cone with height h and base radius r. And we are looking for uh, the maximum error possible if this is measured to be 3 and this is measured to be 4, where, 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 they, where they could be uh, up to, uh, here we go, let's just put these up to 4, down to 2, and this guy can be up to 5 and down to 3. So uh, generally with any 3D object like this, surface area is going to increase uh, exponentially as you increase uh, height or width or any, any kind of 2D property of that solid uh, linearly. So we are going to get the maximum error uh, by going up in in uh, height and radius. And you can kind of see this intuitively. If we have a cube of side length 1 and 1, we're going to have a surface area of 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. Let's say these are centimeters, centimeters squared. But then let's say we have side lengths of 2. Well, all of a sudden, we have a uh, area of 24 centimeters squared, even though we've only, uh, we've, we've only doubled our uh, total side length, we have uh, quadrupled our surface area. So that will apply here too. All we have to do is evaluate this at 3 and 4 uh, to find out what our surface area is at 3 and 4, and then figure out what our surface area would have been if uh, the, the condition for our maximum error uh, to uh, would have actually that that wording makes no sense, but if if we had measured four and five instead, because we know as we increase up, we're going to get exponentially more surface area. So evaluating a uh, at, at three and four, a is going to be three pi times the square root of three squared plus four squared, so twenty five plus pi times 3 squared, so 9. So evaluating, this is going to simplify to 5. 15 pi plus 9 pi is 24 pi. And now all we have to do is evaluate at 4 and 5 and subtract to see our error, like we said. So if r is equal to 4, this will be 4 pi times the square root of 4 squared plus 5 squared, so 16 plus 25 plus pi times 16. So here's where things get a little hairy if you choose not to go down the calculus route, and we'll, we'll see why, because let's see, 45 plus 16 is going to give us 61. And we may have to do a little approximation, but as we see, we don't have any answer choices that are very close to each other. If we had a 15.2 and a 15.1 and we approximated 15.0, then we would be scared. But in this case, it should be okay. So let's approximate uh, this square root in here. Oh, yeah, I can't, I can't, I can't spell. There we go. This is 25 and 16. I thought something was very off about that. This is going to be 41. So we can approximate this square root here 
as, well, it's, it's less than, sorry, it's greater than 6 squared, but it's less than 7 squared. So let's say that that's 6.5. So this area is going to be 6.5 times 4 times 4, which is going to be 24 plus 2. So 26 pi plus 16 pi, which is going to give us 42 pi. And then 42 pi there minus our 24 pi is going to give us 24 pi. Yeah. yeah. The, the pressure of recording makes the, uh, the simple arithmetic actually pretty, pretty difficult. 12, 6, uh, 18 pi. And so as, as you can see, this is not necessarily the best way of going about it. We would have gotten an, uh, an, an, you know, an exact answer uh, if we had gone through it a little, a little more thoroughly. But uh, if you were to do this method, it would point you towards 15.2 pi, which is our correct answer. But as you can see, uh, you know, just trying to do it, uh, try, trying to estimate it by hand if there's a square root involved and you have to approximate that can get messy relatively quickly. This one, on the other hand, uh, is one we should definitely do uh, by hand as well. And this one, you will get the exact answer and it's perfectly fine. So we are given the length and the width of a rectangle measured as 10 centimeters and 4 centimeters with uh, maximum error of 0.1 on each. So uh, just like increasing uh, length on, our, on, the, on the cubes that we are drawing up here, exponentially increased surface area, that, that applies right down to uh, the, the area of the individual squares or in this case, rectangles themselves. So we know that we're going to get the most error out of this if we increase each measurement by 0.1 centimeters. So assuming that our maximum, uh, our maximum error, sorry, uh, the actual values uh, in reality are 4.1 centimeters and 10.1 centimeters, we can multiply these guys and subtract from that 10 times 4 and we will have our answer. So this expression, uh, you know, for third grade, third grade me, this would have been a piece of cake to evaluate. But in the pressure of a test, I don't really want to multiply two and three digit numbers together. So we can split this up into 4.1 uh, times 10, and then add to that 0.1 times 10. And evaluating this, we'll see that this guy right here is going to be, oh, sorry, I, mis I miswrote this. This is, this is going to be uh, 4 times 10.1. There we go. So this is going to be 40.4, and we are adding 0.1 times 10, so we're adding 1. This is going to give us 41.4 minus 40 is 1.4 and we're done. Okay, so this next question is one where we're definitely going to have to use some calculus. So we're told that we have a function f of x and y that's, a, uh, that's made up of g of x times h of x and then we're given all of this uh, data about h of x, uh, sorry, h of y, g of x, g prime of x, and h prime of x. And we're asked to approximate f at 1.1, 2.2. So we can do this by making two functions. We're going to have a g approx and an h approx. And these guys are going to be g prime of 1 plus, uh, whoops, g prime of 1 times the change in g plus g of 1. 
and this guy is going to be h prime of 1 times the change in h plus h of 1. And we can find these pretty quickly. Our change in f, well, we went from 1 to 1.1. Sorry, change in f, I meant change in g. Our change in g is 0.1 because we went up 0.1 from 1 to 1.1. So delta g is 0.1. And by that same logic, delta h is 0.2. And we're given everything else. So g approx is going to be g prime of 1, which is, uh, oh, not that is given as 3, 3 times delta g, which is 0.1, and we are adding g of 1, which is 2. And then h approx is going to be h prime of 2, which is negative 1, times 0.2, our delta h, plus 5. And so solving these guys, we are going to get 2.3, and we are going to get 4.8. Now we, all we have to do is multiply, multiply these together, and we will have our answer. 2.3, 4.8, there we go. So this is going to give us 11.04, which, <laughs> and I'm pretty sure I didn't do any math incorrectly there. If I did, please let me know, because I continually get 11.04, which does not round up to 11.1, .1, which is our correct answer. But I, I assume that they're being a little, a little uh, they, they think they're being funny because you know it's, we're, we have to approximate our approximation a little bit at the end but 11.1 uh, .1 is our correct answer. So here we go. We are given the equation for the area of, sorry, the surface area for a silo, uh, cylindrical, the cylindrical base and a hemispherical cap. And uh, it's a terrible silo. I'm not going into, uh, you know, civil or agricultural engineering, because I would, I would not do very well. I can't draw a silo. Um, but we can do this uh, with the same method that we used last time. Let's use some actual, and this is our last problem, let's use some actual calculus for this one, because it's a uh, you know, it's the way they're the way they're intending these to be done. Although, you know, might as well let's solve it both ways, because uh, I haven't done it the uh, kind of cheaty way for this specific problem. So, we need our partial derivatives with respect to r and with with respect to h. So, a r is going to be six pi r plus two pi h, and a h is going to be two pi r. And we can find what these values are with their measured um, equivalent. So h is 20, r is 8. With that in mind, 6 pi r is going to be 48 pi plus 2 pi h is going to be plus 40 pi, which is going to give us 88 pi. And a h is going to work out to... 16 pi. And so now all we need to do is take our AR, multiply it by delta R, and add AH, delta H, and that will be our total error. And it's, it's not often that you see me doing something on here that I haven't done at least five or ten times on my own. And this, this is one of those cases. I haven't done this question uh, this way before. So it's exciting. Uh, I, I expect to get it wrong. So AR is our 88 pi. And we are multiplying by our change in R, which is one fourth. And then we are adding our delta H sorry, our AH, which is 16 pi, multiplied by 1 half, which is our maximum error in H, or our delta H. And solving this, this is going to be 
22 pi plus 8 pi, or 30 pi, and there's our answer. And uh, yeah, it's 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 correct. Because, and we can we can check this. It's great that these problems are very nice in that you can go back and check your own work by doing it the the, the cheaty way. And if you get both, uh, if you get the correct answer both times, you're you're probably good. So actually, scratch what I said about doing this the other way because I I think I was wrong. I I don't think I've ever done it the the cheaty way because I don't remember ever having to do things like uh, you know eight point two five squared, which is what we would have to do for this. So here's a good good case of uh, a place where it looks like you can. There aren't any square roots, but you can still get thrown off by some of the other math that they put in there. So uh, I was lying to myself that entire time. That's the way I normally do it. And uh, I'm sorry if I, if I led you astray as well. But I hope this was a good introduction or a review to how we can solve differentials in, in different ways and uh, even, even check your work with it. So uh, see ya.